Hey guys and girls, Boardnail back with you on this video. I'm going to be talking about From Season 2, Episode 5. It is called Lullaby. Full spoilers from the start of the review, as always. So, about halfway, well, halfway through exactly now of the second season. And I wasn't that keen on the last episode, but this one is much better. I like this a lot more. And... The big reason is the main focus is the Sarah stuff and her being back and the others starting to find out slowly about her being back and not surprisingly that comes from Kenny because as soon as he finds out and he's pissed with Boyd for not telling him and he finds out the truth about Sarah leaving the door open and allowing his dad to die... He storms off and he starts telling other people and things escalate from there. And that's why it's an exciting episode because it has that focus. And Sarah, I've always said, is one of the most intriguing characters on the show. And just having her back in town now and this secret come out about her being around and what happened is just makes things all the more exciting and it just brings the characters together and brings a focus and tension and it's just an exciting X Factor really. It sort of reminds me, I'm not saying the characters as good as this or anything like that but it does remind me a bit of like the John Locke sort of vibe where he is a wild card in the show, you're not quite sure how to take him at times that being in Lost with him, but Sarah's similar with this. You're you're kind of not sure how to take her exactly or how she's going to develop, whether over the long haul you can trust her or not. But then it does have an unpredictable impact and brings out the best of a lot of characters. So the ripple effect in this episode is very exciting. It's also a big deal for Boyd, like the heat and the tension that's brought on him. So I'm going to talk really about what what it leads to. But the first big focus becomes, like, obviously, Tabitha and Jimmy and their anger than the Boyd concealed her being back around and calls for her to go in the box. They want answers. And there's a really tense stand-up because Boyd has told Sarah to, to stay in, in the in the other room and they come storming in, questioning him and he's trying to bring them around, say things like, you have to understand she's important to the plan, like the usual type stuff. And they're very emotive as they would be saying, well, if it was someone connected to you, would you be so understanding and... It's powerful stuff because Sarah comes in and this is a big thing about her in the episode is that she wants to face up to things. That That's why she doesn't stay put. And she's constantly saying to Boyd, I don't think I can live there. So that's sort of an arc for her a little bit in the episode where she has to learn to stay around and face up to things and... Just live with the consequences of things because it's a unique situation where really practically I, d I don't think she can be blamed for, for her actions. Probably you might say she's been a little bit weak at times, a bit naive, but th there are factors beyond her control as well. But that's a big theme of the episode, her learning to face up to this stuff and just dealing with the hand that's been dealt her and living up to some of the situations and how people are now going to feel about her. That's why it's so interesting, her scene with Elgin later on in the episode, because of him being new to town and it's a fresh person who who hasn't been exposed to the truth about what she has done. Like, But, yeah, very powerful scene with, with Jimmy and with Tabitha with her because she comes out and tries to apologize and Tabitha's having none of it and she just makes it clear stay away from my family if you come near my family 
are gonna kill you and she says she understands and they storm out and I also should I, I think I forgot to say with Jimmy from the last episode one thing with him is then he started pushing this belief then they're part of an experiment and that people are watching them because he comes back to him hearing the voice over the radio and the voice warning him not to let his wife go in the basement and that, that kind of thing. So the, the impression. And then you had the stuff with her a moment later. So that's something he's starting to believe in and the paranoia that, that's coming out from him. The other thing with that family in the episode is with Ethan, because Ethan is upset over hearing his, his family discuss Sarah being around and really confused. And when he comes out of his room, he says, I, I, I need to talk to her. And that they're, they're not so keen. They're very protective for obvious reasons, but they agree to let him go as long as Jimmy's there. Jimmy goes with him. And this is another really well done scene. And it it's a smart scene because not only is it a great scene for Ethan, like him a character moment for him but it's a scene that makes you feel sorry for Sarah a lot and what it does is it it makes Jimmy even though he's been very anti Sarah in in this episode until then it, he actually feels sorry for her cuz he seems sees how cut up she is and how hard she's taking this cuz I think when when Ethan first go to see her like my mind naturally thought he's actually going to be nice to her because they got on before. And that's why it's such a surprising, shocking thing where he stands up to her because he has a great bit of dialogue about, like, you went to live in the woods. I thought you were my friends. Only monsters live in the woods. And you may be a monster, but I'm not afraid of you. Like, beautiful stuff. It's a great bit of dialogue. And once again, that kid acts as really good stuff. And that does link to something with the mother later, Tabitha, and, and the children. So it's a really strong scene. And, like, Jimmy's proud of of Ethan, but he's also taken aback because he sees Sarah's reaction and she just accepts it, which is a big thing. And so the other sort of big, there's a couple more things with Sarah. Like another thing is she's looking for her brother's stuff from these now dead. She wants him his clothes, partly because there's like an important ornament in that. So at one point she wanders into the other house and she starts looking for this stuff and there's a couple of people there, they react negatively towards her and then they say, well, we gave it away, we gave it to like Mrs. Lou and one of them says, to be honest, we were just freaked out about having it, it around because he was dead, but they're like really blunt with her, really harsh, tells her to get the fuck out. So that's when she goes over and once again, it's it's all about her confronting this stuff because... Mrs. Lou, along with Kenny, are the two people who are, like, going to be most pissed at, at him. And this is a great scene. Like, the actress who plays Mrs. Lou is so good in this scene because she's... When Sarah comes in and she's there really to because she wants to get the ornament back, but it's also the scene where she does get to, like, try to apologise and... But it's a great scene because the actress who plays Mrs. Lou just stares daggers at her. And it's one of those good examples of like just acting through facial expressions where she doesn't really say anything, but she conveys so much. And once again, it's just piling all this onto Sarah, but it, it does it in a really effective way. And yeah, Mrs. Lou is just cuts to the chase she goes and gets the jacket i know why you're here you want your brother's stuff so gives him well gives her the box of the brother's stuff and just makes it plain don't come back here 
and is very strong about it. And as she's leaving, Kenny comes in, and that makes things worse. And this is where you really feel bad for Sarah, because he comes after her and says, well, what was that for? What what are you hoping to achieve? And I think just out of spite, like, just to get back at her a little bit, he gets the ornaments and damages it and it's like a whole scene and and Al, Algin tries to help her because it's at that point earlier in the episode they've had their moment in the church which is another good scene because like Algin again doesn't know her so doesn't know any of the history and and they just have a moment in church together where they saw sort of bond and it's another really well done scene because of how it slowly changes sort of direction where it's a nice scene up to a point but it gets very edgy when she starts bringing up her brother and has to mention that he died and she once again facing up to things is, is honest about it. like she's the one who killed him he says well it was an accident wasn't it and that's when she stops and just says, you'll find out it all soon enough. And he feels very awkward, but it's it's a tender scene. Like, they are very friendly with each other. And it's, it's a good choice to have her interact with Elgin because he is, like, a new guy around. And, like I said, doesn't have the... It doesn't know the history with Sarah, so... It's almost this idea of you can bond with someone without any any pressure because you don't you don't know anything about each other, so it's it's kind of so easy. So it's a good scene, and then it makes sense, and he tries to help her later on, and so so that's that yeah that's mostly like the big stuff with Sarah, but as I said, things escalate and. The other stuff with Jimmy's family is that P- Tabitha starts seeing those those kids again that she's been seeing. And that leads her into the woods where she takes the, like the tower, like the tower of shit, like the building bricks, like Ethan's building bricks. Because he's it's sort of appeared to her a couple of different times. So she takes it to the woods and like puts it down and starts saying I'm here tries to alert these these kids and this again is good stuff because it's her being proactive as a character and her having ideas about what this means she seems to have connected it to her past with losing the child prematurely and seems to think it might have something to do with that and they do come to her and once again this is a good horror scene because like they they just swarm around her and at one point one of them at least like some tentacles comes at her and it it's a real full on horror scene and she passes out and comes around and and Jade is the one who who finds her so he like saves her, but obviously he, he can't really see what what she sees neither. So that's that's the thing to to, to keep an eye of as, as well. Another thing, Chris, Kirsty and Mary Lou, Christy and Mary Lou. It's Mary something. I'm not quite sure how you say like the name, but they start bonding again. Like they're now living with each other, and they like reconnect. And I guess the big thing is then Christy finds out that Sarah's back in town. And this is what I mean about this is a good link to everybody and and how it brings certain stuff up. Because, of course, on the night when she went after Ethan the next morning, she used Christy's scalpel. She, She took her scalpel and... There was that whole conversation where, like, without knowing what she was talking about, Christy kind of gave Sarah the go-ahead to, to do that. And so she she's 
obviously pimped up a bit when she hears he's back in town or Sarah's back in town and she wants to go and confront her. So Sarah, so she storms out and Mary Lou talks her around and says, no, no, calm down, I'm here for you. And so you see examples of them reconnecting and bonding and... Like she cuts her hair, that being Mary, Mary Ree, Mary Lou, cuts Christie's hair to how it was before. So that's a good visual touch where she's like recreating what what her hair was like before in the past when they were together. And there's just a little bit of a scene with, with Mary Lou where she's like going through the drugs, raiding the drugs cabinets. Take, so it sort of applies that there's a drug issue with her so that's something they'll return to so it's a really strong episode overall um, probably the only bit I wasn't so keen on which just felt like it what didn't really do that much was you have more stuff with Jade and Victor because Jade this guy appears to him and it turns out it's this Christopher who was there in the past and he's in a photograph and it, he appears to him with like the symbols, the painting of the symbols. So it, yeah, it's like, okay, he must be connected somehow. Like what, what does he know? And because, oh, um, Victor's in, in the picture it's Jay's like, okay, Victor must know something. So he goes to Victor and this stuff is just a bit drawn out and I'm not quite sure it leads to that much. But Victor takes him to a scrapyard and they've taken the violin and, and he wants him to play the violin and he wants her to play like twink, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star and, and it's just as a way to like 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 cheer him up or or, or per, perk him up because the mother in the past sung that to Victor to, to keep him like happy so it's just a, an example and he's taken him to the scrapyard because it's yeah it, where, where the mother was well where the mother's car is so it's you know it's symbolic and all that but it's yeah, it's it's whatever. It's not really the best scene. It's sort of probably the weaker part of the episode. But Jade is looking for answers from Victor. He's desperate to find out more. So that that's why he's a bit like upset and stuff. But yeah, Jimmy goes to Boyd at one point because I mentioned about him starting to believe in the they're part of the experiment and. He wants them to like try again with the radio because of getting the response and he talks to Donna at one point about doing it. She says it's not the right time yet, but maybe in, in the future. And Boyd is sort of the same because he also says to Boyd then Yeah what I saw in Sarah was actually fear and a broken person. So he does change a little bit by the end of the episode like he's more sympathetic with her and he brings up to Boyd the idea of let's let's do the radio thing again let's give it a go he says what he heard so that's something that that they're gonna come back to as well but by the the end of the episode is is nicely done it's another great bit of music you get it, it again comes up on the jukebox, but Roy Orbison's Only in Dreams, which is the bit of music as you cut around the characters. And the like cliffhanger of the episode is that Boyd goes into the diner, and I guess a bit like Sarah, he's facing up to his demons in the episode because he goes to see Mrs. Lou, and, and he says, yeah, we need to talk that basically and that that is the end of it so good setup for the next episode and as i said really really strong episode i think might be one of the best episodes so far so it bounced back quite nicely from what was a bit more of a 
lackluster episode last time. So that's my thoughts on episode 5 of season 2 of From Lullaby. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Like and subscribe as always. And don't forget you get these From reviews a day early on patreon.com slash board now. And that's just for a dollar a month. But thanks for listening. Goodbye.